everyone, my name's Phoebe and I'm part of the STEM response team here at the University of Wolverhampton. In this session, we're taking a look at genes and cell division as part of our biology series. So what is DNA made of? DNA is found inside the cell nucleus and is a double helix, which is a spiral with two strands. Each of these strands is made of something called nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains one of four bases. This could be adenine, cytosine, guanine or thymine. Each base attaches to bases on the opposite strand with hydrogen bonds and bases always join up in the same way. So adenine always attaches to thymine and guanine always attaches to cytosine. This concept is called complementary base pairing as they both have complementary shapes to each other. DNA controls cell protein synthesis, otherwise known as making proteins. A section of DNA that codes for one protein is otherwise known as a gene. The resulting proteins are made up of chains of amino acids, which gives these proteins their different shapes and functions. It's the order of these bases within, within a gene that determines the amino acids that make up the final protein. When a cell needs a particular protein, a copy of the required gene is made inside the nucleus. A copy of the gene is made from messenger RNA, otherwise known as mRNA. So the DNA inside the gene acts as a template for this mRNA, which is also made up of nucleotide bases. These strands also have complementary base pairs, except the thymine is replaced with uracil, which still exclusively binds to adenine. Once the RNA nucleotides line up next to their complementary bases on the DNA template, they join together and make up the brand new RNA molecule. Three bases in a row are used to code for one amino acid. Different amino acids are coded for with different triplets. The order of these triplets determines the mRNA copy, which therefore determines the order of amino acids that make up the brand new protein. So mutations, these are defined as any changes to the base sequence of DNA. For example, one base can be swapped for a different one which could result in synthesizing a different amino acid, which could be harmful. Mutations can cause cancer because cell division is controlled by proteins within the cells. Uncontrolled cell division is what can lead to tumors. Mutations can also cause other genetic disorders, which can be inherited from parental genes, such as cystic fibrosis. DNA is found within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. It therefore has to be wound up really tightly to fit inside. This is called supercoiling, and the resulting structure is called a chromosome. Humans have 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes, and one from each pair is from the two biological parents. Chromosomes are X-shaped and are made of one chromosome strand, which is then attached to a central copy with a central attachment called the centromere. If you have damaged tissue, the cells in the surrounding area need to divide to replace these damaged cells. This process is called mitosis. In asexual reproduction, mitosis is the singular ref method of replication, with the offspring therefore being genetically identical to their parents. These are called diploid cells, which is where all 23 chromosome pairs are present. So mitosis happens in, within five key stages. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This can be remembered with a cheeky little anagram called IPMAT. Step number one is interphase. Every DNA molecule replicates itself so that a new, the new cell will both have a full set of DNA. The new molecule of DNA is still attached to the centromere. The next step is prophase, which is where mitosis properly begins. The DNA becomes supercoiled, which is when the chromosomes become visible underneath a light microscope. The third step is metaphase, which is where the nucleus membrane begins to break down and the chromosomes start to line up in the middle along a place called the equator of the cell. The next step is anaphase, which is where the centromeres, which keep the chromosomes together, split apart and the chromatids se become separate and are dragged to two different ends of the cell. And the final step, which is telophase, which is where new nuclear membranes start to form around both the new groups of DNA and the cytoplasm starts to divide and the cell begins to split apart. So in this diagram here, you can see prophase, 
metaphase, anaphase and telophase. So the next one we're going to talk about is meiosis. In sexual reproduction, two gamete cells, which are otherwise known as sex cells, are needed to make the embryo. Therefore, the gametes must have half of the chromosomes, and this is called a haploid cell. The process of these special diploid cells, which are inside the testes or ovaries, splitting to make the new haploid gamete cells ready for fertilization is called meiosis. So step number one of meiosis, the DNA replicates in the same way as mitosis. Step number two is where the cells separate in the exact same way, just like IPMAT that I was telling you guys about before. Step number three, the cells divide in the same way again, except there is no DNA replication at the beginning. So from step one to four, you begin with one diploid cell. This becomes four haploid cells. So there are four cells with only half of the chromosomes in each. So here's a diagram explaining that. So you can see the full diploid cell replicates as normal, and then the two diploid cells split again to make your four haploid gamete. Thank you for joining me today. It's been loads of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Make sure to take a look at the STEM Response Team website where you can find loads of awesome and helpful learning resources. Bye-bye.